Well, hey there, y'all. This here is Lenore Zan, a.k.a. Road. And if you're going to geek out, I say geek hard, sugar. Welcome back to Geek Card. I just want to say I'm really happy to be here today with Lenore Zan, voice of Rogue in the original X-Men series and X-Men 97, which is coming to Disney Plus on March 20th. I got to say, when I f- people found out that I had this interview, multiple people, men and women, told me, I don't know why they shared this with me, that they were like, eh, you know, sh- Rogue was my first sexual awakening. <laughs> so do you get a lot of people at the show that come up and tell you that Rogue was your, their crush? Yes, yeah, sugar. <laughs> I get that quite a bit. <laughs> Very sad, honey. Been a long shift. When I look back at the original show and I think of Rogue, I think of that episode of Rogue's Tale, mm. where that's the episode where they kind of brought in the origins of the comics, where... You learn more about her connection with Mystique and, of course, Ms. Marvel, Carol Danvers. When you read that script the first time, did that find out all that extra information about the character? Did that in change or inform the way that you were going to continue playing the character going forward? No, it didn't change how I played the character, but I loved the fact that I now had an origin story that I could... Um, embody in my voice and you find out where Rogue's pain comes from because I think you can sense in Rogue that there's a lot of deep pain and trauma that she has survived but you don't know where it comes from and anybody who has trauma um, I think they can sense that in someone else and so now when they see Rogue's tail, they go, oh, okay, yeah, that's where that comes from. Oh, she got kicked out of the home. She wasn't accepted by her own father. Um, hated herself for being different. Roamed around the world trying to find herself. And then finally she found a home with the X-Men where she felt like she belonged and she was accepted. But then comes the point where she has to learn how to love and accept herself. And that comes later. So even like in The Cure, for instance, instance when she goes to Muir Island to try to get rid of her superpowers because she wants to be quote-unquote normal yeah um but that's where she finally realizes hey I am my superpowers and the good they can do yeah. and uh, I reckon I can live with that and she says there ain't no cure for who you are I gotta slow these folks down you yourself in real life appear to have superpowers you're like a renaissance woman the amount of different things <sighs> you've done and of course like not only having you know acting and of course uh, your political career but singing as well i know <laughs> back in 2011 you released uh, change the world yes that's right and recently in 2023 you released uh, mojo man the, yes uh, the remy the ode to remy lebeau right so is that a sign that we're going to be seeing maybe another album very soon yes indeed i have recorded another album i was going to release it this spring but I got so busy with X-Men. Yeah. Um, and I'm also writing a memoir called A Rogue's Tale. Yeah. And that, uh, I found a publisher, it's gonna be published in the fall. Uh, so I have, I have to finish it. And actually on the plane coming from Los Angeles after the premiere to Toronto for this one, I wrote my last chapter. So now I've, I've got it finished and I just have to send it off for editing and, and it'll be ready for publishing in the fall. That's awesome. That's great. Well, Thank you. And then I'll release the album after yeah, that. <laughs> there you go. You're gonna, so it's just going to be a lot of Lenore. You're going to get a lot of different things from Lenore, different projects, right. which is fantastic. Don't flatter yourself, Swamp Boy. You know, the title track from Change the World, you know, today I'm going to try to change the world. Right. It's amazing. You know, you have that song out there, and you're somebody that, like, walks the walk. You Thank know? you. You don't just talk the talk. You, uh, you, you work towards these things. Of course, you spent 12 years in political office, of course, provincially at first, and then as a minister of parliament for three years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully if everything goes okay, we're gonna be seeing a law coming into place uh, that you had a hand in presenting Correct. and yes. introducing to yeah. the, uh, the, the parliament. 
And yeah, it's just it's, it's called um, a national strategy to address environmental racism and environmental justice. Yes. yes. Yes, that's it. And so how does it feel like it must feel really good to get in? Like, because there's so many bills that go through and like the general public goes, what's that for? Right. But something like this, like it's very obvious who it's supposed to help and how it's supposed to help them. It yeah. must feel really good to get something like that through. Our absolutely. Political. Absolutely. And, you know, this particular bill, I mean, the the. The, your audience may want to know what is environmental racism so I'll just explain environmental racism is the disproportionate number of toxic dumps waste sites landfills and corporate polluters that are placed on or beside racialized communities which then has a, an, a health disaffection for these for the folks that are, are placed that these places are beside and so it's disproportionately by racialized communities. So our bill, this bill would actually address that issue and create a national strategy to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore and that there is redress for people who have been affected by it. Um, I introduced the bill first as a provincial politician, as a member of the Legislative Assembly of Nova Scotia back in 2014. And I knew at the time it wouldn't pass because my party was not in government and I just knew the way politics worked, it wouldn't get passed. But I introduced it anyway because I wanted to make sure that the public became aware of the issue and that it would start, that we would have to debate it in the House. And so it was great. I got politicians from all the different parties to have to stand up and, and debate it. And so that was the beginning. And then when I went federal, 10 years, well, that was in 2014, I went federal in 2019, I was able to introduce it there as a, as a private member's bill. And it almost made it all the way through the House, but there was a snap election, and I lost my seat. And so I was pretty devastated. But then uh, Elizabeth May, the leader of the Green Party, reached out and said, Hey, Lenore, would you mind if I reintroduce your bill? Because you're not here to do it. I went, yeah. And I flew to Ottawa, met with the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau, met with the Environment Minister, said, will you please support the bill with, with Elizabeth um, introducing it? And they said, anything for you, Lenore. So they said, yes, we will, we will support the bill. So now it's in the Senate. Yeah. And on March 21st, it's going to the Environment Committee in the Senate. And it will, looks like it will probably pass. We have the votes there. And then it will go back to the Senate, and if it passes third and final reading, it will become law. Y'all don't mind if I play through. When your your political career finished up there in 2021, you started to get back into acting, and your first thing back was a film that's now going to be available in Canada on March 26th. Yeah. Uh, on VOD, well, sorry, on digital across Canada. Yeah. And that is The Madones. Correct. Directed by Barry Dunn, who right. a lot of people might remember as Ray from the Trailer Park Boys, but he also produced that show. And yeah. It's Nova Scotia, so there's, if you're making a film, an indie film there, somebody from the Trailer Park Boys <laughs> is going to be involved. Right. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that film. Oh, and actually, well, Lucy is also in the film who played Lucy yeah. in Trailer Park Boys. That's right. She yeah. plays my sister. And in the movie, she has schizophrenia. And so it's a, a movie about three sisters who had a band called the Madones, and their last name is Madone, so I played Gladys Madone. Um, and it's about three sisters who, you know, they had a, a falling out, and the movie picks up years after they, their, their band has disbanded. And uh, one of them has, has schizophrenia and the other has become the caregiver. And then my character comes racing back to the town after 15 years, trying to make amends and put the band back together. And, and she's wearing a mink beret and a faux leopard skin coat, driving a Jaguar. And um, well, let's just say all hell breaks loose and you find out why they broke up in the first place. <laughs> Putting up with garbage like you. I want to thank you so much for talking with us today. Pleasure. I'm really looking forward to seeing all this stuff. I, out. I can't wait to hear what the fans think about the new show. But yeah. judging from the LA audience and the audience here, I think you're all going to love it. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Thank I really appreciate it, Andrew. Bye.